Hey everyone and welcome back to Kenji Martial Arts. So today's video goes out to all the traditionalists of karate. <sighs> you're doing it wrong. Now I don't mean you're training wrong. I mean maybe you probably are but that's not the point. What I'm saying is you as a traditionalist want to carry on the traditions of previous masters. Almost live the same lifestyle. Practice the same training methods. Hell, even wanting to visit Okinawa to see their old homes, train with their current disciples, in the hopes of becoming more and more like them and their skill sets. Well, are you really carrying on the traditions of the old Okinawan masters? Do you do as they do? Well, let's look at some of their behaviours, their quotes, and see what information we can get from that, shall we? Now, at this point, everyone knows that large parts of karate were developed in the Okinawan red light district. Party town. Fishermen and merchants roll up, get drunk, fight, and then spend some time with ladies of the night. And no, I do not mean vampires, I think. So basically, one of the world's most famous martial arts was developed from years and years of lads' nights out. Here's a quote from The Essence of Karate Do by Gichin Funakoshi. For the skilled martial artists of the time, Naha's red light district was the place to engage in earnest battle. When the evening came, the young people of Shuri would travel nightly to Naha, seeking both valor and romance. Romance, well that's one way to put it. Now let's look at a couple of the old masters in turn. First up, Anko Itosu, considered the grandfather of modern karate. Looks very wise with his big, brush, moustache thing. But did you know he was a massive alcoholic? In the book The Karate Do My Way of Life, on page 17, no I won't quote the whole thing, it's too long, but basically in the red light district, Itosu talks about how he was attacked, he grabbed the guy, dragged him into a restaurant, and ordered food and drink and made the guy drink with him. Another anecdote, unfortunately I can't find the exact quote, but Itosu would be drinking at a bar and every now and then a friend or a student would walk up to him and hit him as hard as they possibly could. Now he didn't flinch or say ow, he just looked at them and smiled. More than likely because the alcohol had dulled him of any sense that he had. Another anecdote I heard was that Itosu was passed out on the road on a night out. Three guys came up and accosted him, to which Itosu then proceeded to kick their teeth in and break their arms. Sounds a bit excessive, but hey, that's show business, baby. Now, why was he passed out in the middle of the road in the first place if he's supposed to be an all-wise master? From this, we don't even know all the kinds of health problems he probably had. Funakoshi used to say that he had the silhouette of a barrel. Now, yes, he was a strong person, but how do you get that big if not from all the calories and the alcohol you're drinking? Now, I'm not shaming him, I'm just stating the facts. Come on, traditionalist, he's making you look like lightweights. Where are your nights out? On to the next master, Sokun Matsumura. He was bodyguard to the king and considered the great grandfather of modern karate. He was also given the title of Bushi, which just means warrior, probably the equivalent of getting knighted by the queen. But did you know he met his wife in a barroom brawl? In the book, The Essence of Karate Do by Gichin Funakoshi, he describes Matsumura's wife. And I'm probably gonna butcher her name, but it's Tsuroju? Tsuruju? I'm gonna go with Tsuruju. She was considered a beautiful woman and trained many, many years in martial arts. She basically set off on a quest to decide which man could beat her in a fight, in which case that's the man that she will marry. And I quote, True to the rumours he heard, Matsumura found himself on the verge of being thrown through the air. When he narrowly managed to put an end to that encounter, that was when Sujiru grabbed Master Matsumura's hand and cheerfully said, You are the gentleman that will be my husband. Now what kind of 007 Ian Fleming James Bond storyline is that? Imagine being the best fighter in the land, bodyguard to literal royalty, and you meet your wife in a bar and brawl. He was actually very confused at the time. He tried to fight her to see how good she was, but she ended up proposing. Now that is a Chad level move. Now another anecdote is the origin behind the kata gankaku, or chinto. Chinto was a pirate stealing from local villages, and Matsumura was sent to basically stop him. But apparently he found himself evenly matched with the so-called pirate. He befriended him, he trained with him, learned his fighting style and condensed it down into the kata. So the bodyguard to the king didn't do his job properly, but he took one look at that pirate's fighting style and thought, Damn, I gotta learn me some of that. Once again, this is another One Piece Zoro meets Luffy storyline. So what information can we get from these stories about Matsumura? He didn't care who, when, or where. He just wanted to fight even though it meant going against the rules. Now, last master, Motobu Choki was known as a street fighter. He fought in the red light district all the time. He said, and I quote, it is necessary to drink alcohol and pursue other fun human activities. Well, I wonder what other fun human activities he pursued in the red light district. 
I wonder. Now, he was considered to be a bit of an exception. People didn't discredit him because he was indirect royalty. He was all about making things functional, testing them out, making sure that they worked in any scenario that he wanted them to. If he kept losing street fights and kept getting beaten up, he would have eventually died. So in pursuing martial arts, he literally put everything on the line each time he fought. He fought, he learnt, he moved on albeit somewhat recklessly. Now, what is the point of this video? Don't deify previous masters. Why even call them masters? Well, quite simply, they were the most famous karate practitioners there were. We like to think that they honed their craft to perfection, but what about all the martial artists that came before them? Are they grandmasters? Supreme grandmasters? Super Saiyan grandmasters? You get the point. They were only human and only ever had human limits. No human will ever be perfect. Sure, some were exceptionally strong. Funakoshi said Azato's hands could pierce solid objects, and Itosu could crush bamboo with his bare hands. Funakoshi himself said that they were true exceptions, but training karate shouldn't be about trying to be like them, the more they tried to do that sort of thing, the worse their arthritis would have been. I've heard Ian Abenethi say a lot that we can only see so far because we are standing on the shoulders of giants. I'd rephrase that. We are standing on the shoulders of those who came before us, they are standing on the shoulders of those who became before them, and again and again and again. Basically becoming a giant ladder. Like in the 1998 film Ants. That was a classic. Everyone who came before us were human and everyone who will come after us will also be human. Until cyborgs become a thing, in which case the ladder gets too heavy and it collapses. These masters did not finalise karate, nor were they superhuman. They had their weaknesses and limits just like we all do. But what we can learn from them is not stagnating their styles. Hell, not even having styles. Funakoshi hated the idea of styles, and quite rightly so. They didn't limit themselves, they traded ideas, and they kept getting better and better. We can learn from all of their mistakes and accept that we will never be like them, nor would we really want to be like them in the first place. And to be honest, we don't even know if half of this stuff is true. We get these stories from books and word of mouth. I didn't know the old masters. I didn't go out for a drink on the Friday night with them. And I don't know anyone else who has. So naturally, these stories, like every other legend, get embellished. And these people are made to seem to do the impossible, but we need to accept reality. So in the honour of reality, what can we realistically learn from these guys? Anko Itoso knew it was better to friend people get to know them, chill, have a few drinks, eat some food with them. And if you get your opponent more drunk than you, you can have better coordination than them in a fight. Matsumura's stories teach us to never stop seeking new challenges, new information. We can never stop learning, even from pirates. Although I would wholeheartedly recommend not seeking them out. Multiple Choki taught us to make sure our art suits its intended purpose. And I quote, there is nothing more harmful to the world than a martial art that is not effective for actual self-defense. Now it's okay to look to the past for curiosity, but not for answers. And I quote, change is the law of life. Those who only look to the past or the present are certain to miss the future. JFK, Call of Duty Zombies. Remember, these old guys used to long ago have different lives and situations from us. But arguably now, martial arts practitioners are much, much more knowledgeable. We should be looking to modern times. People that we can actually see training, people that we can actually train with and contact them. There are tons of fantastic practitioners out there, teaching their karate, improving it, and not letting it get stagnant. These are the real modern masters, even though I hate that term. You've got Brian Bates, Andy Kidd, Bob Davis, Andy Allen, Chris Hansen, Mary Stevens, Les Bobka, Mal Sanchez Jones, Jan Drachman the Dragon Man, just to name a few. There are so many names, I can't name them all. There are so many more out there. There are too many to list. But they are out there and it's up to you to search for them and find them. Links down below for the ones that I have mentioned. Anyway, today's rant is over. I hope you enjoyed it. Please drop a like, comment, subscribe, hit me up on my socials. And of course, I wish you all the best with your training. Take care.